Hello, and welcome to my series called Author Questions. I am on a lot of author groups on Facebook and online, and I see the same questions asked a lot. Now, of course, someone could just use the search function in the group to find previous questions, but just we, nobody does that. I don't, you know, just people don't do that. Maybe you're the exception. I don't know. But the same question is asked every few weeks. And maybe a, a little bit of different spin to it or a little different angle to it, but there are very, some very common questions. So instead of dumping my answer amid the other 250 replies or answers in that group, I'm creating videos where I can kind of dive in a little bit deeper on my answers and why I would answer the way I do, something that you can't really explain in a Facebook comment. So this is my series of author questions. Let me know if you have questions you would like me to answer. And of course, this these answers are not definitive. These are my opinion. These are what I do and what helps me. But if you are out there asking the question, then I assume that you would. that's what you're looking for is other people's experiences and opinions. So hopefully this helps. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. It helps me a lot. And then you'll know when I answer other questions. Check out my other playlists for authors, self-publishing made easy, and audiobooks for authors. And click the links below if you'd like to support me. All right, let's jump into today's question. How do you name characters? Every book you write is going to have main characters, secondary characters, just ancillary characters that may only appear once. And you have to name, you have to give them all names or most of them names. And that's one thing I want to dive into. But how do you figure out what to name them? What is your process for discovering good names for your story? So without further ado, let me show you some of the things that I do. All right. So let's walk through some of the ways that you can find names for the characters in your books. First, if your characters are from a certain place, if a certain time period, then you should search for popular names or names from that time period. So I have a book, Dragonstones, where I have Scottish characters from way back. So I needed Gaelic names. I had Icelandic characters. So I needed some names there. So you can do a, an internet search for Scottish or Gaelic names. This one came up on Wikipedia, and then I just went through the search and read them all. So now the question is, which one do you choose? And I'm going to talk about that last. But this is a good way to find names, especially if you are looking for names from a specific country or time period or language. Okay, next, if we want to focus on the time period, for this example, I did, this is namecensus.com. There are a bunch of websites that do this, but I just searched for, hey, I've got a character who was born in 1925. So what were the most popular baby names in 1925? You don't want to pick a very modern name for someone who was born in 1925. That wouldn't make sense, right? You want a name that matches the A or the time period when they were born and would have received their name. So these are the top names for both boys and girls in 1925. Many of these are have stayed consistently common throughout the years. You still find a lot of Johns and Georges and Josephs, etc. Um, Margaret, Ruth, Virginia, Doris. See, on, on the women's side, you don't really see those names uh, anymore. Like, I don't know any little kids named Margaret or Ruth. So on this page, you're not just looking at the top 10 or 25. You're, we're talking the top thousand. So you have a, a lot to choose from to fit your character. So that is another great way to find names that match the characters. All right, let's look at way number three. I really like this way. So go on Family Search or Ancestry. If you don't have an account, you can create a free account on Family Search and start looking through your names. 
So you see here this um, Brunelda McNeil, and I've done posts about this character. She's a character in my Western, Snow Falls Soft on the Hidden Valley, and it is connected to my Fountains of Power series. So I was searching through my family tree and found this name. She comes from, her family comes from Scotland, which my character comes from Scotland. It's a very unusual name. You don't hear it very much. So I went with it. I went with Brunelda McNeil as one of my characters. And that then, because there's that connection from the Western to the Fountains of Power series, which is my action adventure fantasy series, I went down the McNeil family tree and I actually went to Scotland to the Isle of Barra out in the Outer Hebrides where the McNeil clan is from. So I got to see those places and describe them and that became one of the lo locations in my book. And that was all based on choosing this name in my family tree. Just that name McNeil really drove it not only character names, but it drove future plot lines in future books. I have other Scottish ancestors. I knew I wanted it to be Scottish and that I could have chosen a Cameron or a Mikhail or others, but I went with McNeil because I liked the, the Brunelda seemed to work for that character. And the name was so powerful. It became a driver of the plot of future books. And I feel a connection to that character in my books, and it's not a biography, right? It's not a true story or anything, but I feel a connection to that character because the character is named after one of my ancestors. And I've even gone to the gravesite because she immigrated to America and she's buried nearby. I've, you know, I've been to uh, actually John McNeil, her dad's gravesite. So pretty cool way to connect with your characters is by finding something, some a person or a name from your family tree. All right, the next is to take the traits of your character and find the name based on those traits. So again, in my book, Dragonstones, I have Icelandic characters, so I needed Icelandic names, but I wanted names with meaning. So this, I searched for Icelandic name meaning warrior, right? And it could be any any characteristic that you want, but now you've got this list of Icelandic names with their meaning. So you can look more towards the meaning and choose the name based on the characteristics or meaning of that word or name. So if you are, I don't know that I can pronounce these. <laughs> All right, so the, this shows you where it came from, and it is the name of a patron saint, um, meaning birch, meaning bear, birch tree, day, maid. So you can walk through these meanings, find the one that really fits your character, and then the, choose the name that way instead of the name driving the character the character is driving the name so that's another cool way you can do it and you can do this with uh, english names with scottish names with polish russian whatever ethnicity your character is you can find you can just search meaning of names and then that ethnicity you know russian arabic whatever so that's another cool way and a way that I've used before. Okay, so I've given you places to go to find lists of names, which is great giving you the ideas. But if you have kids, you, you probably went through the same thing my wife and I did is you go through books or websites back, back when we were naming our first, it was books of baby names and you go through hundreds if not thousands of names trying to find the right one and it takes forever you may ask your friends you may ask your family you might have polls with friends and family and, and it's always oh 
oh, I really like this name. And then your wife says, no, I knew someone in high school by that name and I didn't like them. Or no, that reminds me of this celebrity. I don't want. And you go back and forth on these this these names before you can finally agree on one or two. And then for us, when when we had the baby and held the baby in our arms, that's when we were able to really say, this looks this looks like this name, right? We were able to match that name with the person that we were looking at. And that is what I want to get into now because it's the same process. These characters are your creation. So they're a little bit like your baby and you're going to have these list of names that you go through and you'll reject, you reject most of them out of hand because they won't fit. You might reject others because they're too hard to spell and you don't want to have to list them a thousand times in your book and spell that name. <laughs> it could be as simple as that. But your character, when you get to know your character as an author, that character will begin to speak to you and you, you will just like holding a baby in your arms and saying, George, this is George. You will have that moment with your characters. If you get to know them well enough and you know who they are and you've done your research and a list of names kind of narrowed down the ones you want, my, in my experience, the name of that character will come to you and you'll say, this is the right fit. You'll have that feeling, this is the right fit. So it is. it can be a little bit subjective when you get to that point that you as the author, as the creator, as the person bringing that character into the world, you will say, this is the right name for them. If you've had that experience before, let me know in the comments. I've actually had the experience before I even did any research, I'm starting to write a character and the name doesn't just come to me. The character almost tells me, like I almost hear, it's not a, an actual voice, but I, I hear my character telling me my name is. And I've had that happen to me on more than one occasion where the character is the one who told me their name. Just like sometimes a character tells me when it's time for them to die. I've had the exact same experience with naming characters because as you're creating them and you're bringing them to life, they, yeah, they just like, I don't know how to explain it. The character really, really just told me, this is my name. This is what you will call me. So let me know if you've had that experience because it's a pretty powerful experience and it leaves no room for doubt. You're, you're, when you have that experience, no one, you can never have someone say, um, why did you name them this? Or you should change this name. And you will be adamant and say, no, I can't. This is the character's name and it's nothing else. So allow the character to speak to you. Don't don't tell yourself that that's just your, you know, your imagination or whatever. That could be your character speaking to you. Listen to your character's voice and hear them. And you'll be amazed what they tell you as you write your story. So I want to share one, one last good example of character naming. And it's part of a movie. Um, it's a movie about Charles Dickens writing the Christmas Carol. And I really love that movie as a, as an author, as a writer, because the experience that he pro portrays and, and it's not 100% true to what happened to Dickens, but the experience he port portrayed in his relationship with his characters in that movie is very similar to what I experience. So when he was trying to name Ebenezer Scrooge. Charles Dickens used to take notes of names when he'd see interesting names or meet people who take notes and then refer to those and maybe use those in future books. So in the movie, he's sitting there going through all of these iterations of names for Ebenezer Scrooge. And when the name, he finally came upon the name Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge actually suddenly appears in his room 
and he comes alive. And then for the rest of the movie, Scrooge, there's this ongoing dialogue. He, it's like Scrooge is real to him as he's writing the book. There's this ongoing dialogue between Charles Dickens and Scrooge. And Scrooge follows him and informs character development and storylines, all just as this very real, real figure to the writer. And that happens to me quite a bit. The characters come alive and they dictate the story and also the name. So those are the ways that that's how I would answer the question. How do you name your characters? Now, if they are just ancillary characters, someone, they, your, your main character meets in passing, it's not as difficult. You can just choose a name. It's pretty easy, but a character that has meaning that ha actually has a plot and development, you want to like the name. You want it to fit your character. So those are a few of the methods I use to name characters in my books. All right, so I've walked through some of the ways that I name the characters in my books. If you have a different process or something different that you do, that I would love to hear from you. I'd love to, to maybe try it out. So put it below in the comments. If you have any other author questions that you would like me to create a video on or expand upon, again, put those in the comments. I love hearing from you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, really appreciate it. And if you would like to support me, you can go to the link below, get stickers like this or apparel with support indie authors on them or some other book nerd type apparel. Again, I would really appreciate it. And you can see as you're walking around with some of, some of those uh, shirts, who's literate? Who understands the jokes. So check those out and I'll see you next time on author questions.